are. So um, let's go for the presentation. So my name is John Mark Mason. I'm uh, interested in various aspects of uh, helping developers uh, contribute to uh, the Jenkins project and particularly interested to everything that is uh, creating friction. Hey, we see that we have Elizabeth uh, joining us. Hi, good afternoon. Sorry, I'm just joining in. I'm currently <laughs> Hi, Mark. Yeah. Hey, hello. So I just made the, the presentation. And for the the last thing, practical thing, I am located in Brussels. So I'm just one hour later uh, than you in the UK. Elizabeth, you're located in, in England too? No, um, I'm currently in Nigeria. Oh, okay. Oh, what yeah. time zone is that? So what time is it for you? Um, currently now it's two min um, six minutes past 2 p.m. Okay, so we're on the time at the same time. Okay, yeah. Zinap is now at one o'clock, and yeah, Mark, yeah. I don't, I don't ask because he's way out of my working hours. <laughs> it's very early uh, for him. So coming back, so I've been interested in things that create friction for developers. In one technology I came uh, to was uh, Gitpod. Uh, Gitpod is a solution for uh, simplifying the setup of a development uh, environment, having a lot of traction right now, and has a very interesting uh, free tier. Uh, so one can already do. I like it, so I'm biased <laughs> somehow. And um, what I use it most and I hope that I will answer questions that you have. So um, I will show you a little bit what it is, what I do with it, do a short presentation of what I do, and then we'll open up to any questions or clarification you would like to, to have on that. Mark Zinap and Elizabeth, is that okay? That's great for me. Okay. Yeah, that also great for me too. Okay, good. Um, I'll explain afterwards, to put everything back in picture. I'm just going to start this. There we are. Uh, I did not prepare my environment. So uh, I'm going to move that away. So, uh, what I want to show is very clearly, I have, uh, we have Jenkins.io, I have documentation, uh, and I want to create something new. And I quickly show you what is a process. Uh, and I'm going to start a new blog post, uh, for instance. So as I'm lazy, I have... Um, um, my shortcut for that. So this, so first question, do you see my screen correctly? Should I make it larger? For me, this is Yes, this is please, great. I think you should make it larger. Okay, great. Okay. So larger is, is good then. Okay, yeah, so please. don't- Thank you. Don't hesitate to interrupt. Why doesn't it work? Uh, it doesn't help me do that. There. Is this better? This is very big. Good to go like that? Yes. That's is. great. Filling the screen is... is yes, is, it is. is. Thank you. Right. Okay. So this is my fork of Jenkins.io. So fork from... So this is my work environment. This is the easiest way uh, to start working. And the first thing that I do is I have I John have Mark. an go John ahead. Mark, sorry, you, you offered to let us interrupt. Is it okay if I interrupt? Sure, definitely. Okay, so so there's an indicator already that there's one action you need to take before you do any Git pod stuff. Right below where your mouse is hovered, there's a line that says you're one commit behind in from Aster. Could you click that <laughs> fetch upstream button? Yeah, fetch sure. Merge. 
Thank you. Okay. That way, yeah, yeah, one, of the, one of the crucial things for me is I need to stay up to date on my fork and that fetch upstream button does it. Okay. Now yeah. back to you. Sure. No, no, no. That That's, that's uh, very good. So uh, I need to prepare that a little bit better. So uh, about GitHub, there's some configuration to be done bef uh, before. So you need to create your account. There's some automation and plugins that you can install. I skip all the setup part. We can discuss that afterwards. So here, everything is in place. What I do, I click on my GitPod button. And what GitPod will do, it, it starts the environment, asks me first uh, my uh, uh, what environment I want to uh, use. So, so now, and while that's starting, I don't have a GitPod button on my mine, and so that's part of the initial setup that you said we would look at, we would discuss later. Correct. Okay, thank you. So uh, uh, this is part as well explained. What is happening right now in the uh, on the screen is it as I refreshed uh, my fork. He's rebuilding everything and preparing everything automatically. Uh, and uh, the, the rules how to do that is defined in a configuration file in the root of the project. Meaning that every project that you want to use Gitpod uh, on, the maintainer can, but not has to have to, uh, can configure it and say, well, this is the recommended way of using uh, uh, Gitpod. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm not going to wait for the pre-build. We're already going to uh, show, otherwise I need to say too much nonsense. What's happening now, so the pre-build stuff, is something that can happen in um, asynchronously. And, and here we paused that for, uh, uh, for a moment. It's creating a container and all the infrastructure in the cloud. So it starts all the tooling required. You, if you want to ask a question or, or so, uh, you need to say it clearly. Yeah, so while while the while this container image is being pulled, could you show us in another tab the contents of that gitpod YAML file that you mentioned? Oh, it's already sure. opening. Don't don't disrupt. It looks like well, it's opening the IDE now. Yeah. Uh, I have here a, a step between uh, because I'm experimenting with IntelliJ. Uh, um, so it can go quicker than that, this is what. So I will open a browser editor, which is Visual Code, uh, uh, Visual um, Studio Code. This I'm going to, uh, these messages. So I need to uh, set up the window correctly. I put it that way. So uh, this Visual Studio code is running in the cloud. I have nothing installed on my laptop. I had beside enabling Gitpod, which is mainly configuration, I had nothing to do. I have everything ready uh, and you recognize the regular uh, editor uh, uh, functions. So. In the terminal window, what I want to show you is the asynchronous process of preparing my uh, environment uh, that's happening here. And in fact, to answer uh, Mark's question, this here, the gitpod.yaml is the configuration uh, that the maintainer makes available to contributors and say, this is the way you want to do. Now here, uh, I stop that for a moment. No, I'll, I'll explain it afterwards. Let's skip that. 
Uh, oh, but that that is the preview. That was the preview. This is that, a preview. Is yeah, up. yeah. Okay. It's, it starts, but uh, otherwise, uh, um, uh, I'm I'm mixing you all over the place, and I'm okay. sorry. So I wait. So explaining the Gitpod configuration. This is something that uh, the um, uh, uh, that the maintainer. Uh, uh, makes available has different parts. The part here, tasks. Mark, I'm getting into a rabbit hole. I'm sorry for that, but I'll make that quick. This is everything that's required to set up the environment, and this runs automatically. The tooling is in place. Everything. This part here explains what are the Visual Studio Code gadgets or plugins that I want to have available for me. And here I want to have the ASCII doctor uh, integration. I could add, for instance, a plugin that I will do uh, shortly for spell checks, uh, which comes very uh, uh, handy. Somebody uh, uh, hinted me to a good. So this is where I configure the Visual uh, uh, Studio code. This is just to say that my pod will expose data on port 4242. Uh, and this is, as you can see here, it started the preview and it makes it available on that port. This instruction here says it's available on the internet. Uh, we'll come back on that. I, I just tried to explain it a little bit. Let's go for. Uh, let's go on with the with the demonstration. Uh, these are the ports that are open by my pod. The other ports are required for the IntelliJ um, uh, IntelliJ integration. The one we're interested in is the forty two forty two. This is where. Uh, the test environment is exposing the web server. No, Jean-Marc, how did you how did you get that list of ports? Sometimes I get confused by the Visual Studio Code interface. Did you hover over that thing on the bottom? I, I clicked. Okay. So, so uh, you see here, you have the list of ports that are um, exposed. I mm -hmm. clicked on it. Ah, and that brings it up in the Explorer in the top left. And so I have here, I can also reach there. It's a remote Explorer. Thanks. I select the port. And here on the right, uh, I can uh, have different, uh, so it shows a characteristic. And I don't know what the others uh, do. I click this one that makes, I want to open that port in the browser. And as you've seen here, this is, uh, uh, hold on, one, two, three, four, okay, so you have it. Uh, this is here, this is a pod or an instance in the cloud that's really for me and for this particular instance. And I believe you can make that available to others, but let's say this is a preview. And it uses this editor. And as you can see, this is the log file uh, of what's happening. So each time I navigate uh, in there, uh, let's say we go to blog, uh, Happy New Year, uh, for instance. When I go here, I see all the pages um, that that have been served. So you have the, the web server interface, but we'll, we'll try it out and see how it, how it works. So what, did we, what do we have right now? We have an editor running in the cloud. So no resources used locally. Uh, it has a complete environment with the required tooling and it started a private test instance of the website with a web server and exposed that on, on the internet. So I can access it that way. Uh, I can check 
uh, later is, can I share that link as long as my pod is running? I believe we can have several people doing a preview. So that means that I'm ready now to do actual work. So I go on my other terminal session, so I don't have, it's not too noisy. So I have it here and um, I'll start working. The first thing that I will do is I create a work branch and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, name that uh, demo uh, branch. So it is always the first thing that needs to, to be done. A good habit, never work or try to do anything on the master branch. So this is where I can do the change. I can decide if I commit them and push them uh, to, uh, to my GitHub uh, repository. But this is a habit that I'm, I'm trying to, to have. So uh, we're not going to uh, create a new one because I'm lazy. I'm just going to modify the um, Happy New Year a page, a blog post page, and we're going to see how that uh, changes. So I go in content. So there you need to have a good understanding of the structure of the file system. Uh, and you need to know where the sources are located. So, and this is the source um i'll make that smaller so this is the source of the happy new year um uh, page as you can see the ascii doctor integration is working uh, highlighting the different uh, things and uh, you, it also has the uh, automation for that like a uh, link uh, and and uh, uh, the various ASCII doctor uh, automation for that, not the purpose of this presentation. I'm going to do a modification and say, we're going to change the year and, and say 24. I explain you later why. So we made, we made a change uh, uh, on it and we're going to see if it re reflects on here. And as you can see, this is a preview. It immediately took the modification I made here. It uncommitted anything. And you immediately see uh, the, uh, the change. I even going to hijack um, the, uh, or, or not hijack, but I'm going to add myself. Uh, I think this is the name I'm known on. So I'm not sure that this is, and let's say I do a refresh of it and I crashed. This is because, well, this, this is nice. It crashed, why? Uh, because the, this is probably not known. So I have well, a, an, an error in it. Yeah, go so ahead. John Mark, in this case, this what it was looking for, if you go back to that failure page, the failure page actually tells us what's failing. It's just painful to read. Yeah. It says the file with personal information, content data, authors, Marky Waits space JM Messen dot ADOC is missing. It thinks that's a single author named okay. Marky Waits space JM Mason. And therefore, okay. So, what, so you what is do, the you actual... need to use a different syntax to identify okay. multiple authors. And I think it's authors colon rather than authors. So multiple authors. Right, exactly. So authors okay. and then put us on two lines. Right. Now we'll see okay. if I remember the syntax correctly. Yeah. And I do a refresh. And there've been cases in the past where I had to do a, I had to stop the compile that was running, stop the build that was running and start it again. So exactly. this may be one this of those. This is something that I do. Now, what is very interesting here, we, you see the interactive process 
of trying out and having an immediate feedback. And this is very powerful with no installation required lo locally. This was my sales pitch. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to stop the compile. Make it bigger so you see. So I interrupted the server and I restart the run. And uh, just need to do that. Now it duplicated it and we're going to see if my theory, so it's still starting up here and we have P-O-N there. And it's, uh, so it's exactly the same. So here, I'm, I'm, I'm lazy. I'm just going to see if this one refreshes. There it is. So uh, there it works. So what I've been mumbling in my beard uh, was that it by default opens a new, op opens a new uh, browser window for your preview. It's not necessary to do it because you can reuse the existing one. If, you, if you're not sure of what you do, uh, well, just open it and, and just go. It's, the navigation is, is quickly done. So this is how I uh, edit uh, the, the thing. So what I then could do, and this is just using the Visual Studio Code uh, integration. So how do I commit? I can use the Git interface uh, here uh, and do uh, this is uh, change and this will be local to the pod going into too much detail again but uh, I'm going to commit that in my local thing and I can now publish the branch which I will not do because this is just a noise uh, for that but you can also do it from the command line uh, uh, so you can do um, a git status here, nothing uh, to do. And so you have uh, all the required uh, commands. I'm just wondering if git. So git I assume commands. that the file has not been saved yet. I, I'm not sure I understand why. Oh, did you no, it's, commit? Well, just to show that the git integration did. Okay, I, sorry, I missed the commit. Thank you. Okay, so, so there is a commit. Uh, so this is the commit. So I just show you, I don't know how familiar everybody is uh, with that. I just make a change there. Ah, so it works like that. This, by clicking here the plus, you do the equivalent of a git add. The stage, the change is uh, uh, staged. Here I create my commit message and to do the actual commit, you do that with the, the check mark uh, there. When you hover over the uh, stage all changes, here I can unstage them. And this is the Git integration uh, in uh, Visual Studio Code. Now you can do that with the regular commands here. Uh, you have a full Git uh, 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 command line interface uh, available here. So uh, I'm going just to revert this. So I'm going to unstage that. So just showing here the Git interface and I'm going to uh, discard the changes. Yeah, I'm doing that. Uh, this is for the people that like their mouse or trackpad, but it's it's easy. I honestly I use that interface very often, but it depends how good you are at typing. And other people, wow, everybody does it this way. So this was a short demonstration. Uh, uh, I don't know what else. So this is the principle. Uh, Mark uh, Sinap or, or Elizabeth, can you tell me, did you understand what I tried to show here, the principle, and do you have questions? So 
uh, at least for me, I think I understood, but now the questions are around how do I, how do I as an individual get to the point where it is as easy to start this kind of development as you did? So how do I get the Gitpod button in my GitHub um, okay. account or how do I do other steps like that? Right, okay, I'll cover that. Zeynab, do you have questions? Um, yeah, so I think my question is also related to what Mark asked and um, specifically on um, setting this up, is there any um, specification that my PC has to meet or do I need to do nope. any configuration on my, my laptop before I'm able to do this setup, um, this port setup and things like that? This is the good news of that. The only thing you need is the uh, a working modern browser. So I'm using uh, Google Chrome. It works also with uh, Firefox. On your okay. machine, on your machine, there is only the browser. And it's oh, like. Right. So, okay. Go ahead. All right. So, um, based on what Zainab just um, asked, I was also going to ask a question because I noticed that you are uh, using um, a MacBook, a um, Linux, and not Windows. So, does this can this setup also work for, work with um, a Windows PC, or it's just for that? Because um, any I, so it's I think it even works on an iPad. That is the dumbest terminal that it exists. Now, I, I without a, a, a keyboard, I would not be able to do any sensible work. But it works on on. Uh, uh, a MacBook, it works on a Windows machine, it works on a Linux machine. There's no prerequisite. This is why I'm so excited by this technology. Uh, there's no requirement, no Docker container or, or tools to be installed. You just need your browser as a window into the pod. All right, All thank right. you very much, thank you. Thank you. Um, I have another question. Um, you used um, Visual Studio Code for this um, presentation. Is that the only ID that is available on GitHub currently, or um, are there other IDEs that one could use for this development? Yes. Yes and no. So okay. uh, uh, the the easiest thing is, so this browser, but no, so this editor, IDE, works in the browser. So you have nothing to install, nothing is required. But you, you, you're stuck with um, uh, Visual Studio Code because they made the work of having a web version of their tool. They are. They have in beta right now the IntelliJ um, integration. Now this works a little bit different. It requires you to have the IntelliJ or another IDE installed on your, your machine. It's a pity that I cannot draw, but um, so what we've seen here everything is in the cloud and you just use your web browser as a window to it. The other technique that you can use is that you have your IDE and it runs locally and you just open a command socket and uh, it will send uh, the commands via a tunnel. And so the editing will happen uh, locally, all the compilation, the testing, and all that will run in the cloud. So you can run a local version of Visual Studio Code. Uh, there are hints that uh, NetBeans works. IntelliJ, I tried it two days ago, and uh, it works only with the paid version the ultimate. 
So it does not work with the uh, community edition. So if you want to have the easy thing, you have to use Visual Studio Code on the web, on, uh, on the web browser. Otherwise you start to have uh, potential issues. What okay. browser, what IDE would you have been interested in? Um, so for me, Visual Studio Code is okay. Um, I'm just asking for people who are not used to Visual Studio Code or who are used to other IDs like IntelliJ um, that you mentioned, is there any option for that? But for me, Visual Studio Code is, is, is perfect. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. For the other IDEs, uh, I, I, I'm experimenting it. I'm trying. They're mentioning several solutions for that. Uh, but uh, it, it does not come out of the box. So I'm, I, I did not give up yet, but, um, and it's, it's a very rich uh, uh, project. So they're, they're changing at a fast pace, but the okay. IntelliJ integration, they want to make money of it. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll stick Visual Studio Code then, because me for me it's um it's either um IntelliJ, um Visual Studio Code or IntelliJ, but I think I still prefer um, Visual Studio Code because it's lighter, it's more lightweight yeah. than IntelliJ. Yeah, so most of the time I use Visual Studio Code, so that works for me. <laughs> yeah, and um the so it's possible to run your personal copy of visual studio code that you have on your laptop with all the tooling and settings that you have so it's possible i i i made that work i don't have a demo ready uh for that so that works it makes the setup of the environment uh, easier here, it each time needs to install and configure the plugins in the environment you have uh, that I'm showing here, uh, for instance. But oh. um, here it works. I, I made Java development and uh, here I count maximum three minutes to set up everything for a Java project uh, with uh, uh, everything required. Uh, for uh, the demo. So I can even, uh, uh, so when you're developing a plugin, I don't know how familiar with you with that, but the, M the Maven HPA, uh, HPI run, you can, you can make it run uh, there. What else can I explain or tell you? So um, Mark, back to Mark's question of how do we set it up? How do we integrate with GitHub? How do we have that GitHub and uh, Gitpod icon showing? Zinab, you're, you're, I, I tell you one thing, I forgot. <laughs> so no, <laughs> the honest, the honest answer. I made that in, uh, when was it? In October or November? And uh, I'm an old man, so I tend to, so I have, I need to go back on tape and reload that in my brain. Uh, the <laughs> principle, you just follow the instructions. Okay. And uh, if, uh, um, there are a few tips that I can give. So um, if you're interested, uh, I'm going to create a new account and take notes. How it is, but the documentation from Gitpod is well done. You just experiment, and uh, I, I can make a, a, a short checklist uh, how to do that. Mark, so, John, Mark, would you open the Gitpod.io site so that they can see what it, how it looks, and yes, how it appears? Sure, sure, definitely. Uh, just making this broader. You don't want me to say that I'm old. I regularly tell my children they're not allowed to use the O word. That's not <laughs> acceptable. But yet you, yeah. 
So uh, I just opened uh, Gitpod and it opens by default uh, on the workspace. Uh, a workspace is a pod with all the file system to run the environment. So what we're just running now uh, is this one here. And I created 28 minutes uh, ago. Um, here, you don't see it, and especially with the light. So these are the workspaces. Uh, I'm going, I think this is, so this is the account. Um, and um, I'm going to talk about that. Uh, I didn't prepare that, so I don't know how to do that. Here, we'll walk through the interface and so uh, uh, you'll see uh, how it works. So this is the free tier open source one. And that means that you have 50 hours of running of, of uh, a, a development environment running. So now the clock is ticking because I have this environment open. And you see here where I am standing. So I didn't use a lot uh, during my, my holiday period. So I only used uh, that. So 50 hours, if you're, you're working uh, cleanly, uh, this works, th this is okay. Now, if you pay a little bit more, then you have a hundred hours and this is there you're very comfortable. Now, what you need to do is when you finished doing your work, I made the modification, you just close this window here and this will shut down the environment, the workspace, Jan, it's done. So now, it's as I didn't, Go ahead. It's enough to just close that browser tab. Yes. Now the bad habit is, oh, it's already 12 o'clock. I need to go downstairs and have lunch. If you leave your, your, your tab open, the clock continues ticking. Now it will wait, I think for half an hour and it sees no activity, it will kill it. And say, so, so, so there is a timeout. And, and if I haven't pushed my changes from the local copy that's there in the, in the GitPod workspace, they would be lost, I assume, when this- They're goes. lost, exactly. Okay, so, so it's important that I remember to push, not just do the development and then close it, thinking it will have saved it automatically. So yes. I do a git commit and then a git push to push it up to my fork. Now, this is because I want to stay in my free tier. Uh, so if I want to do that now, uh, if rich people can go to the, the unlimited one and they don't need to care, they can keep it open. And uh, so ju just just a, a, a little detail. So see when you're in unlimited and, and, uh, and so on. Uh, this is well enough for, especially for open source projects where you don't do it uh, 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 50 hours this this, this is uh, uh, two weeks uh, two weeks worth of full-time work so it, it, this works well uh, you can have team plans that mean that you have a team uh, integration uh, integration this is where the uh, the security uh, uh, is done where you associate this is where the magic of associating your your GitPod account with uh, GitHub, and it shows what are uh, the permissions uh, that it uses. So it's really well integrated in the GitHub uh, security uh, model. If you use a default and follow the instructions for for setting it up. It makes sense. It's it's. Uh, I was all. Uh, I made. You can also decide what are the repository that you allow to work with GitPod with your your account, because uh, your GitHub account has a lot of privileges. And so what I said, 
Gitpod is only allowed to work on my forked repo. So uh, I cannot make uh, uh, any changes. I cannot access them. So you can, you can tune it. References, uh, preferences. This is where um, uh, you can use uh, the way you decide how it looks like. These are the desktop IDEs. So these are, and this is what I've been experimenting. I should remove uh, that. And this is a new thing that I've heard about. I did not uh, use. That means that you can upload your settings. So that is yet another reason not to use a local uh, uh, IDE. And then we have here, these are projects. Uh, this is another gadget that they're offering is you can define here that it, you know, the setup phase that we had at the beginning when I started uh, the pod, you can have a process that will prepare that for you permanently. So each time there is a change, uh, on that uh, uh, commit is um, uh, merged uh, into it, it will prepare everything, store it on file. And when you start your Gitpod environment, it will just copy it over and you win a couple of minutes like that. This is interesting when you have very, very large uh, projects. So it, gadgets to, to make your life easier. So, uh, don't get bothered by, by that. So this is a problem when you start showing old settings and everything. Um, it is, uh, you go in too many details. So I, I hope I did not lose you. Uh, Mark, Sinap and Elizabeth. So I was, I was actually curious if we wanted to, if there are more topics that you wanted to go over, we should go over those, John Mark. But I wondered if we should ask Zenob or Elizabeth to share their screen and let's walk them through registering for gitpod.io. Yeah. Because uh, I could do it, but I think I'm already registered. And so yeah. if either of them would be willing to be our, our test case here, we could have yeah. them share their screen and we could we could do a talk through with it. Uh, just checking where I think this is getting started. Uh, so they have nice videos. Uh, so where is it explained so, how to register? Introduction. Now we can we can start. So I'm I'm okay. Well, I'm, with, I'm not sure that. they're willing. They may say no. They don't want to be. Uh, but they can. <laughs> you, Actually, you, but that's a really great idea but um I think, i'm i'm actually um, I think, um, listening to mobile oh okay if you're on mobile then yeah. that won't work all right okay. good uh, yeah, exactly. and elizabeth you're you're on your mobile too i am on my pc so i could right use my name as a test case on, although i'm on having the... kind of stable network currently okay really here uh, what you can do is i so what we can do is that i figure out uh what the what the entry point for it is but you just go to gitpod.io uh you you look a little bit in the documentation and uh what's there and you just start, you create the account and, and it will walk you. So I, I found the experience super easy uh, to, to do. Try that. If you get stuck, you have questions or you want that we organize a, a screen sharing session or something like that, just ping me. Okay, can I, can I share my screen, my screen like right now? Absolutely. Yes, I freed mine. Yes, go ahead. Okay, let me do that. Okay. Okay. Can you 
Fancy my screen. So um gitspot.io were telling me that's an error. So I don't know this is uh are you on a corporate network? Oh, I've been having lots of issues. Yeah, it looks like a network issue. Yeah, so in my case, it brings up a, a login to Gitpod dialog when I go to gitpod.io. Yeah. Now, I, I don't know. Yeah. So I, I think this looks like a proxy error or something like that. Yeah. And, and it could be that that someone is defending you or you know if you're inside of inside of a corporate environment or inside of a network it could be that they're they're intentionally blocking that's good to know for us because if if it's often blocked that would make it less effective for for people who want to contribute that's a good point mark i didn't think I, i've been spoiled after five years outside I of do not uh, think corporate. this is the network error because my um, other links are going properly. So I think it, it's not something that has to be network. Huh. Um, and yet, uh, Elizabeth, are you using your office network or is this your personal? I'm using my personal network. I'm using my personal Wi Fi. Huh. I have wow. my personal network. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Okay. So I wonder if, I wonder if just, they've done a geographic blocking. It is just my PC and my um, phone that's connected to it. Nothing else is connected to it. It's my mind. I'm going, I'm going to ask the, the, the people from Gitpod. So you're, you're located in Nigeria, Nigeria, right? Yes, I am in Nigeria. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll ping them uh, and put you in copy of the, the mail to know if uh, there's some geolocation do i drop my um meal here for you so that subsequent um i i think mark has the the oh, mail yes. And, yes he does he does and i think it's in the uh in the invitation i'm just checking yes oh so, all right uh, all right you have lisa okay Oh, I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm, Lisa I'm sorry. Okaume. <laughs> Lisa Okaume. Is that correct? Lisa Okaume. Yes, Okaume, did, yes. Lisa Okaume. Did I pronounce it correctly? I, I know it's it's hard, but I want to learn right, it. Right, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I want to learn it. So, never been to Africa, so I... I, I, wow. I don't know. So many things I need to learn. So many so things I want. Oh. If if you'd like, I could certainly share my screen so that I'm not as I'm not fully configured the way Jean Marc is. That way, at least we've got a record of some steps that are are used. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I know although I'm I'm using my mobile, I was just able to register and connect to my GitHub account. Oh, okay. okay. I so think, at least I, I'm think, I think I should also try with my mobile whether it would work. Great. Okay. Let's well, and that. and we're we're almost out of time, so it's it's yeah. well suited. It actually worked on my mobile. Worked on Good. my mobile. Okay. Like that's it. Right. So it's okay. I need to figure out what what happened. So happened to my PC. Yeah. Okay. Here, I'll, I'll talk to the Gitpod people and put you in copy of my, my mail. So we, we, we know about, about that. And, uh... right. Probably we could okay. have maybe like a screenshot of what's showing when you try to access it. So you could use that probably as a reference when talking to Gitpod people. I don't know if yes. that would be useful. Yeah, um, I've taken a screen. I'll share it via mail. Yeah, okay, well, you. right. Well, we're going to to see because uh, I have a few contacts uh, there. Now you understood that I like the product. Uh, I try not to be over enthusiastic about it, but I think there is really a great 
there, there's music in there. So we, we well, but well, it's a pity it didn't work. <laughs> Thank you so much, um, John. <laughs> I also think like this looks really exciting um, coming from someone who knows how, should I put tedious it can be, trying to set up Jenkins.io locally run it and things like that especially when you're dealing with windows i've gone through that pain and i was about to go through that pain again before mark mentioned that there's something called Gitpod, and i'm really excited to try yeah. this and not have to go through the stress of setting it up on my pc so um i think this is really great thank you so much yeah. i'm i'm pushing i'm pushing for for that because i i put myself in the position of students or people that it takes a lot of time to set up everything before even starting anything and this is what i liked with gitpod uh, once it you have the base uh, installed oh i just want to change that and you fire it up five minutes done and your your pr is submit and this is what really said bing a light went on and i'm 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 really excited with that so mark the demo was unstructured it was done with my guts <laughs> and with <laughs> we we thank like thank you very much Jean mark thank you so much right we <laughs> like yeah, visceral direct from the heart thank presentations you. well done john mark <laughs> well done okay so but I tried to to write a, either a blog post or a documentation or or material uh, about that. What do you think about that, Mark? That would be great uh, for Elizabeth and for Zinab. We'll also we can use Doc's office hours on Thursday to answer any questions. If you have questions, right. don't be shy about bringing a question there and saying, "Hey, I I'm sure. having this problem or that problem," and we'll talk about them. John Mark won't right. be available at that time. It's after his at the end of his day. But I can I can do my best to help, and we'll work it out together. Right. Yeah. We can work a sure. Uh, thank you. Mark. So I'll see what I can do before then. Um, just try to use the documentation and see um, if I'm able to set it up and you know do something. Yeah. And if not, then I'll bring you my questions. Thank and, you so much. And and don't hesitate to put your experience. The problems you had to solve, and we put them in a pot, in a pot, not a pod, a pot together, and so we can write a frequently asked questions for if other people want. Oh, oh, oh. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Thank you very much, Mark. Thanks so much, Mark. So, voila. recording recording will likely be available in within the next twenty four hours if you need to refer back to it. I assume that all of you all are right. okay oh. that I po post this publicly. I'm going to post it to community.jenkins.io so that people can look at it and see, hey, how how do you do this? How do you do that? Jean-Marc, yeah. thank you very, very much. It's it's been it's been a pleasure for me. All right. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>